talk about console modding quite frequently on this channel and I feel like I don't give the Wii enough attention. The Wii is one of the easiest home consoles to mod and one that just has a tremendous amount of flexibility and different things you can do with it. I'm talking about you know, different emulators, anything from the common ones like the Nintendo 64, the PlayStation 1, the Game Boy Advance, the Super Nintendo. Sure, you can get those running on the Wii, but you can get even more specific things like you know, different older computers or you know, the older Atari. It's just a whole bunch of wild stuff running on the Wii. And it's just incredible kind of what the homebrew community has done to make the system really be one of the best available. And with that said, today I want to talk about two games that the homebrew community and groups of fans came together and created that I think are two of the best games out there as far as fan-made games go. And it's impressive to see that they're using Nintendo IPs and were able to get away with it in a way that has not resulted in these games being taken down, considering that both of them have been around for years. First, I want to talk about Project M. Now, this is a mod for Super Smash Bros. Brawl, though it's hard to call either of these games a mod because they're so far past being a mod that they're basically their own game, though it relies on Brawl. Now, Brawl got a lot of complaints back in the day for being a little bit too welcoming to new players and it lacked the complexity that Melee had and as a middle schooler playing this game with my friends on their Wii's considering I wasn't I was a PlayStation guy back then I didn't own a Wii but I would play the game here and there at my friend's house this made it be much easier for me to you know take a couple weeks off and go play at least at a you know relatively same level to them so I liked the fact that Brawl was more welcoming but many people did not and that's where Project M comes around it expands the character roster adding people like Mewtwo that I couldn't believe was not in Brawl um, as well as just all kinds of outfits for the character but this undermines what Project M is really about what it's really about is adding that classic melee gameplay style where things move much faster it's much more advanced there's different different free-forming combos you can get, and of course there's no tripping. It really takes a lot of the random nature that Brawl introduced out and makes it play more like Melee to the point where there actually was at one point a competitive scene around Project M. Now, this game got completed, quote unquote, I guess, or development ended on it in 2015, which makes a lot of sense considering that they'd already been working on it for four years. I think they probably got to a point where they thought that it was ready to sit at. And that's where we're at today with Project M. You can play this with either a legitimate copy of Brawl or through one loaded through you know, a USB stick or however you want to load games on your Wii. It's just basically some files that go on your SD card. And I'll have a link in the description to get you up and running with that using a tutorial created by someone else. And while technically Project M in a sense did come to an end in 2015, it has somewhat continued on in the form of Project Plus, another community-driven initiative that has continued to update the game even this year to kind of keep legs on and just keep moving forward with keeping this modified version of Brawl alive. If you want to learn more about how Project M came to be and some of the more you know technical nuances of what makes it be different than Brawl, I'll have a link to a video down in the description from Forgotten Games for you guys to check out. Now the second game is actually a Mario Kart spin-off, so really the two big hitting franchises from Nintendo receive these awesome fan versions from a dedicated community. And this one's Mario Kart Wii's CTGP Revolution, which was created by Mr. Bean and Chatters and just a ton of other people because there are so many tracks and just an insane amount of content available in this game. Once again, it's hard to even call it a mod. It's, it's basically its own game. Um, now, unlike Smash Bros, where you could run Project M off the USB drive, this one you truly do need the legitimate disc copy of Mario Kart Wii in order to get it up and running. But again, it has more than 150 custom tracks. It's just bound with content. Um, as well as over 60 retro tracks in the previous game, making up a total of over 200 tracks. But the big thing that I think really gets people to want to check this out is the fact that it still has online multiplayer. Right now, It's I'm recording this video in the middle of the week, in the middle of the day, and there's still 30-some odd people, it says, actively playing this game right now. I'm guessing, you know, at night, you know, maybe it hits 50 people or so. Um, would you think about a game this 
this old to have an active community like this, to have a leaderboard type system on chadsoft.co.uk, the website for the game. It's absolutely remarkable to think that Mario Kart Wii has stayed relevant for this long. And it's something that you can play on an unmodded Wii, on a modded Wii, but the point is you have to have the actual disc. There's also some new game modes. I don't know if those are very popular to play online, but it might be something to check out You know, if you're just playing locally with your friends, as well as a 200cc um, engine class version, which of course we've seen on the more recent Mario Kart 8. Uh, but it's brought back here in Mario Kart Wii's CDGP Revolution, which again, just is bound with so much content that you can't believe they're giving it away for free. I even saw a video where somebody ranked every single track in this game. I'll have that link down in the description because I think it's something you'll definitely want to check out. Um, that was from Cousins Production and it's just an overwhelming one hour look at really every single track you're getting when you download this pack. It's just remarkable. I think both these games are just great testaments to what gamers can achieve when they put their minds together and ultimately work towards creating the game that they want to play. I know here and there I still go back and I play some Pokemon GBA ROM hacks because ultimately those are at the difficulty and the story complexity that I want to see you know, as an older gamer that Nintendo ultimately hasn't delivered. And that makes sense when you consider the fact that, yeah, Nintendo is catering to a child audience and Pokemon Sword and Shield were never supposed to be these deeply complex games. So I will say the recent release of the, the Pokemon Sword and Shield DLC where Reggie Rock and Reggie Ice and Reggie Steel are in the game and the puzzle to get to them is super easy compared to what it was back on the Gen 3 games when I played as a kid. It's just kind of a, a slap in the face to how much things have changed. But ultimately, I'm so proud of this community um, and their dedication to create something special. So thank you guys for watching. I'm Bailey, and I will see you in the next video.